talk about lecture. Lecture is highly structured method by which the teacher verbally transmits information directly to the group of learners for the purpose of instruction. The lecture formats allow for only minimal exchange between the teacher and the learner, but it can be effective method of teaching in the lower level cognitive domain to impart content knowledge. It is useful to demonstrate pattern, highlight main ideas, or present unique ways of viewing information. Lecture is useful in providing foundational background information as a basis for subsequent group discussion. And lecture can be easily supplemented with handouts materials and other audiovisual aids. With respect to its limitation, the lecture method is ineffective in influencing affective and psychomotor behavior. It does not provide for much stimulation of learners and there is a little opportunity for learner involvement. Despite the limitation of this method, there are specific strategies to strengthen the effectiveness of lecture. Each lecture should include introduction, body, and conclusion. During the introduction, learners should be presented with an overview of the behavioral objectives pertaining to the lecture topic, along with an explanation as to why these objectives are significant. The next portion of the lecture is body, or the actual delivery of the content. Careful preparation is needed so that the important aspects are covered in an accurate, logical, cohesive, and interesting manner. The final section of the lecture format is a summary or conclusion. At this juncture, review the major concept presented. It is very important that your lecture not exceeded the prescribed time so that you do not have to end abruptly because time has run out. The second traditional method is group discussion. Group discussion is a method of teaching whereby learners get together to exchange information, feelings, and opinions with one another and with the teacher. Group discussion are student-centered activity. With discussion, students are participating, asking questions. Students will develop their oral language skills and abilities. Oral language actually lays the foundation for reading and writing skills as well. If then, group discussion area from a critical thinking, center discussion and evaluation, and now assist of an issue of a complex problem. Teachers can have amazing debate and arguments with discussion. With discussion, teachers easily inject minimum feedback to the entire group. The most students enjoy group discussion because they are quite engaged. Also give the student a voice. Group size can vary but most group discussion techniques can be used with a few as 3 people and as many as 15 to 20 people. Group discussion is effective method of teaching in both an effective and cognitive domain. Group discussion requires the teacher to be able to tolerate less structure and organization than other traditional method such as lecture or one-to-one -one instruction. It is important for the teacher to maintain the trust of the group. Everyone must feel safe and comfortable enough to express his or her point of view. A major advantage of group discussion is that it stimulates learners to think about issues and problems and to exchange their own experiences, thereby making learning more active. It provides opportunities for sharing of ideas, receiving peer support, fostering a feeling of belonging, giving guidance, and reinforcing previous learning. Group discussion method is economically beneficial from a time-efficiently perspective. Teaching people in groups rather than individually allows the teacher to reach a number of learners at the same time. The third traditional method is one-to-one -one instruction. In one-to-one -one instruction, the teacher delivers an individual instruction design specifically for a particular learner. It is an opportunity to communicate ideas and feelings primarily through all our exchange, although nonverbal messages can be conveyed as well. With one-to-one -one method of instruction, questioning is an excellent technique. It can be used to involve learners as active participants in learning process and to give feedback on their progress to the instructor. One-to-one -one instruction has many advantages. The major benefit is the ability to individualize teaching.
This method is an ideal intervention for initial assessment and continuous evaluation of the learner in the third domain of learning. The major drawback of one-to-one -one instruction is the isolation of the learner from one others who may have similar needs of concern. Learners are deprived from opportunity for identification with others through sharing of ideas, thoughts, and feelings with those who may have linked circumstances. Economically, one-to-one -one instruction is a very labor-intensive method and should be well-tailored to make the expenses worthwhile in terms of learner outcome. One-to-one -one learning of patient and families is often an efficient approach to learning because the educator is reaching only one person at a time. It is imperative to begin by making a clear distinction between the method of demonstration and return demonstration. Demonstration is a method by which the learner is shown by the teacher how to perform a particular skill. Return demonstration is the method by which the learner attempts to perform the skill with the cue from the teacher as needed. These two methods require different abilities by both the teacher and the learner. Prior to giving demonstration, learners should be informed of the purpose of the procedure, the sequential step involved, the equipment being used, and the action expected of them. Equipment should be tested beforehand to ensure that it is complete and in working condition. For the demonstration method to be employed effectively, the learners must be able to clearly see and hear the step being thought. In demonstration method, the role of the learners is to observe the teacher presenting an exact performance of the required skill. Return demonstration should be planned to occur close to when the demonstration was given. When the learner is giving a return demonstration, the teacher should remain silent except for offering cues when necessary or briefing answering questions. Practice should be supervised until the learner is competent enough to perform steps accurately. It is very important to plan return demonstration session close enough together that the learner does not lose the benefit of the last practice session. As with demonstration, the equipment for return demonstration needs exactly match the use by the instructor and expected to be used by the learner. Learners will need a varying amount of practice to become competent, but once they have acquired the skills, they can practice on their own to increase speed and proficiency. Practice makes perfect is quite true. Demonstration and return demonstration session are very time-consuming and require plenty of time to be set aside for teaching as well as learning. Gaming is an instructional method requiring the learner to participate in a competitive activity with preset rules. These activities do not have to reflect reality but they are designed to accomplish educational objectives. The goal is for the learners to win a game by applying knowledge and rehearsing skills previously learned. Gaming is fun with a purpose. It promotes retention of information by simulating learner enthusiasm and increasing learner involvement. Games can be devised or modified for individual or group learning. More complex games require the learner to use problem-solving and critical thinking strategies. This method adds variety to the learning experience and is excellent for dull or repetitious content that requires periodic review. In gaming, the teacher's role is that of a facilitator. At the beginning of the game, the group needs to be told objectives and rules. Any materials needed to play a game are distributed, and the various teams are assigned. When the game is completed, winners should be rewarded. Prices do not have to be expensive because their main purpose is to acknowledge achievement of learners in a public manner. At the finish of the game, the teacher should conduct a debriefing session, focusing on educational content and evaluating the gaming experience. Learners should be given a chance to discuss what they learned, ask questions, receive feedback regarding the outcome of the game, and offer suggestions for improving the process. Simulation is a method whereby an artificial or hypothetical experience is created that engages the learner in an activity that reflects real-life conditions, but without the risk-taking consequences of an actual situation. Participants can try out their problem-solving, interactive, and psychomotor skills. 
a simulation provides realistic learner involvement in a real-life situation with consequences determined by variables inherent in the situation. Simulations are effective for teaching higher-level learning in the cognitive domain as well as promoting the attainment of psychomotor and affective skills. An effective use of simulation would need to include as many aspects of these complex processes as possible to determine whether the learner has the necessary skills to do the activity correctly. Simulation should be followed by a debriefing session. It should include a discussion of events that happened during the experience, the decisions made, the actions taken, and the consequences of the choices. Role-playing is a method by which learners participate in an unrehearsed dramatization. They are asked to play assigned parts of a character as they think the character would act in reality. This method is intended to arouse feelings and elicit emotional responses in the learner. For role-playing to be employed effectively, the teacher must be sure that the group has attained a comfort level that allows each member to feel secure enough to participate in a dramatization. All learners should be given an assignment. Those who are designed as observers require specific instructions about what to attend to during the role-playing session. Role-playing is best done in small groups so that all learners can actively take part as players or as observers. This method is most effective for learning in the affective domain. All participants need to discuss how they felt and share what they observed to gain insight into their understanding of interpersonal relationships and their reactions to role expectation or conflicts. The advantages of role-playing is that this method offers an opportunity for the learner to explore feelings and attitudes. This method is most effective for learning in the affective domain. All participants need to discuss how they felt and share what they observed to gain insight into their understanding of interpersonal relationships, develop problem-solving and decision-making skills, and explore topic in depth. Its limitations are, learner can exaggerate or underdevelop the role, limited to small groups. Members need time to establish a rapport with one another as well as with the instructor or else learners may feel embarrassed or self-conscious about playing a part. Lastly, this approach also has limitations when participants are uncomfortable in their rules and therefore are unable to develop the rules sufficiently. Role Modeling A role model is someone others look as a good example. A role model is someone who is worthy of imitation, like your beloved teacher or a well-behaved celebrity. Just as a model is something that represents an inspirational ideal, a role model is someone who inspires others to imitate his or her good behavior. Parents try to be a role models for their children by being good people. A famous person who gives money to charity or helps sick children is a role model. If someone behaves badly, you could say that they are a negative or bad role model, the kind of person who shouldn't be imitated. Top 5 Qualities of Role Models Clear set of values. Role models act in ways that support their beliefs and values. Ability to overcome obstacles. Role models show that success is possible despite obstacles. Selflessness and acceptance of others. Role models see others' needs and act on them. Commitment to community. Role models are other-focused as opposed to self-focused. Passion and ability to inspire. Role models show passion for their work and have the capacity to infect others with their passion. Self-instruction activities is a method used by the teacher to provide or design instructional activities that guide the learner in independently achieving the objectives of learning. 
Self-instruction modules come in a variety of forms including, but not limited to workbooks, study guides, workstations, videotapes, internet modules, and computer programs. The teacher serves as a facilitator resource person to provide motivation and reinforcement for learning. Each self-instruction module needs to contain the following elements. Introduction, which generally include a table of contents, the terminal objectives, the intent of the module, and the direction for its use. List of prerequisite skills. The learner needs to have to use the module. List of behavioral skills, which are clear and measurable statements describing which skills the learner is expected to acquire on completion of the unit. Pretest. Diagnostically determine whether the learner needs to proceed with the module. Some learners may demonstrate mastery in the pretest and can move on to the next module. Other learners will get a sharper focus on their areas of weakness and may decide to seek additional preparation prior to beginning the module. List of resources and learning activities. Specifies the equipment needed such as videotapes, slides, or written materials and outlines the actual learning activities that will be presented. Objectives are given to direct the learner, followed by material presented in small units of discrete information called frames. The total length of a well-designed module is kept relatively short so as not to dampen the motivation to learn. How the material is presented will vary with the objectives and the resources available. Self-assessments Provide feedback to the learner throughout the module. The user is frequently able to do periodic self-assessments prior to moving on to the next unit. This allows the learner to decide whether the previous information has been processed sufficiently enough to progress further. Post-test. Evaluate the learner's level of mastery in achieving the objectives. If the learner is aware that a post-test needs to be completed, this requirement encourages paying attention to the information. Keeping a record of final outcomes is helpful in both staff and patient education as documentation of competency, as proof that standards were met, and for the purpose of planning for continuing education. Inherent in this method of teaching are the advantages of self-pacing, active learning, the chance to review and reflect on information, the ability to get frequent feedback, and a mechanism to prove mastery of material accomplished in a particular time frame. Self-instruction modules have been found to be cost-effective because they are designed to be used by large numbers of individuals with minimal and infrequent revisions. The self-instruction method is effective for learning in the cognitive and psychomotor domain, where the goal is to master information and apply it to practice. Its limitations are learners with visual and hearing impairments, low levels of motivation, a tendency to procrastinate, or little experience with learning by self-pacing will have difficulty with this method. Self-study also may be boring if this method is overused with the same population with no variation in the activity design. Computer-assisted instruction is an individualized method of self-study using computers to deliver educational activity. Most learners will proceed at their own pace with immediate and continuous feedback on their progress as they respond to a software program. Most computer programs assist the learner in achieving cognitive domain skills but can also be used to master psychomotor behaviors and to change attitudes. Computers integrated with color, sound, and video motion are a type of CAI known as interactive video disc or computer-assisted video instruction. This type of instruction is more expensive because of the multimedia applications. Computer games also referred to as edutainment or educational software disguise in a game format. 
introduce content or involve the process of competition in the application of strategies for decision making toward attaining a goal. This instructional method has also been useful in teaching hospital staff nurses the concepts of quality improvement. Distance learning is a telecommunications approach to instruction using video technology to transmit live or tape messages directly from the instructor to the viewer. The delivery format used with teleconferencing allows for one-way video and audio information to be sent via satellite, microwave, or ground telephone line from one place to another. The advantages are cognitive domain instruction, where the goal is to get information to a wide variety of people located at great distances from one another. It is an ideal way to transmit current information without incurring the cost and time in traveling needed to meet to face with the expert delivering the instruction. It can become interactive for the learner when teleconferencing is set up to allow for call-in questions via regular telephone. Because this format can reach large audiences, it is a relatively expensive approach for teaching. And its limitations are, the teacher and learner is removed from each other, and it can become a lecture type one-way interaction session if no telephone hookup is available for interactive question and answer periods. And this global resource is limited only by the learner's inquiry skills and energy. Selection of Instructional Method The process of selecting an instructional method requires a prior determination of behavioral objectives to be accomplished and assessment of the learners who will be involved in achieving the objectives. Also, consideration must be given to available resources such as time, money, space, and materials to support learning activities. The teacher is also an important variable in the selection and effectiveness of a method. Teachers are at different levels on the novice to expert continuum and how seasoned they are influences their choices of instructional methods. An expert skilled at facilitating small group discussion may be a novice in the design and selection of CAI. Teaching is a skill that can be developed in formal academic settings, in continuing education programs, or through guidance by an expert per mentor. Noro 1979 emphasized the importance of periodically examining your role as a teacher and assessing the factors of energy, attitudes, knowledge, and skills which influence the priority you assign to teaching and the ability to teach effectively. The following is a summary of her suggestions. And another factor to be considered are these following. Evaluating of instructional methods An important aspect of evaluating any instructional program is to assess the effectiveness of the method. Was the choice selected as effective, efficient, and appropriate as possible? There are five major questions to ask yourself that will help you to decide which method to choose or if the methods selected should be revised or rejected. Number one, does the method help the learners to achieve the stated objectives? This question is the most important criterion for evaluation. If the method does not facilitate accomplishing the objectives, then all the other criteria are unimportant. Examine how well matched the method is to the learning domain of the predetermined objectives. Will the method expose learners to the necessary information and training to the learn the desired behaviors? Number two, 
Is the learning activity accessible to the learners you have targeted? Accessibility includes such as issues as when information is presented, the location and the settings in which teaching takes place, and the availability of resources and equipment to deliver your message. Number 3. Is the method efficient given the time, energy, and resources available in relation to the number of learners you are trying to reach? To teach large numbers of learners, you will have to choose a method that can accommodate groups such as lecture, discussion sessions, or role-playing, or a method that can reach many individuals at one time, such as the use of various self-instructional formats, or CAI. Number 4. To what extent does the method allow for active participation to accommodate the needs, abilities, and style of the learners? Active participation has been well documented as a way to increase interest in learning and the retention of information. Evaluate how active learners want to be or are able to be in the process of gaining knowledge and skills. No one method will satisfy all learners but adhering to one method will exclusively address the preferred style of only a segment of your audience. And lastly, is the method cost effective? It is vital to examine the cost of educational programs to determine whether similar outcomes might be achieved by using less costly methodologies. In this era of cost containment, Insurers want their monies invested in patient programs that yield the best possible outcomes at the lowest price as measured in terms of preventing illness and injury, minimizing the severity and extent of illness, and reducing the length of hospital stays and readmissions. Hi everyone, I'm Grisha Ana Padelio. I'm about to discuss the increasing effectiveness of teaching. And now, let's start the discussion. What is the increasing effectiveness of teaching? The increasing effectiveness of teaching is a passion to keep improving their abilities. So, there are two parts of increasing effectiveness of teaching. And those are creative techniques to enhance the effectiveness of verbal presentations. General principles for all teachers. To enhance the effectiveness of verbal presentations, there are eight creative techniques. Present information enthusiastically. The teacher used gestures, facial expressions, eye-to-eye -eye contact, and demonstrate interest in the topic to attract and fascinate an audience. Don't overusing body language and overactions because it can be distracting and can adversely affect learning and the next one is include humor appropriate humor can also enhance the effectiveness of verbal presentations humor establishes an atmosphere that allows for human error without embarrassment and encourages freedom and comfort to explore alternatives in the learning situations Avoid making someone the object of your humor. Next is exhibit risk-taking behavior. They use this technique to encourage learners to reach their own conclusions about controversial issues. Exercises that allow learners freedom to experiment and express their ideas focus more on the process than on the result. Next is deliver material dramatically. The teacher uses strategies that connect the educational material directly to the learner's life experiences so that information is made more understandable and relevant. Learners may be asked to participate in simulations, games, or role-playing to act out a part, live an experience, or test their capacities. Next is choose problem-solving activities. In today's world, professionals must have the ability to identify both patient and system problems by searching and sorting data, uncovering problems, and finding solutions. Next is serve as a role model. 
as part of the creative teacher's repertoire of behavior, rule modeling is an effective way to facilitate learning. Teachers are seen as credible rule models when they are actively engaged in scholarly activities, are experienced in the field, and have advanced credentials to teach complex skills. Next is use anecdotes and examples. Anecdotes, whether amusing, alarming, sad, are valuable in driving a point home, clarifying a topic under discussion, or helping someone better relate to an issue. Using examples relevant to past experiences and the, learn and the knowledge base of learners helps them identify and connect in a concrete way with the material being taught. And lastly, use technology. The use of different types of technology assess the teacher in helping learners meet their individual needs and styles of learning. Technology has the potential for making the teaching learning process more convenient, accessible, and stimulating. And let's proceed the last topic, the general principles for all teachers. Give positive reinforcement in the form of recognition, tangible rewards, or opportunities should closely follow the desired behavior. Project and attitude of acceptance and sensitivity that teachers conduct themselves, the willingness to receive and answer questions, the simple courtesies extended, and the responsiveness demonstrated toward an audience set the tone for a friendly, warm, and receptive atmosphere for learning. If you exhibit self-confidence and self-respect, the learner in turn will feel comfortable, confident, and secure in the learning environment. Be organized and give direction. Materials should be logically organized, objectives clearly defined and presented up front, and directions given in a straightforward, specific, and easily understood manner. Instructional sessions should be relatively brief so as not to overload the learner with too much detail and extraneous content. Listen and give feedback. Feedback should be a reciprocal process. It is a strategy to give information to the learner as well as to the receive information from the learner. Both the teacher and the learner need to seek information about the quality of their performance. Feedback should be encouraged during at the end of each teaching learning. Use questions. Questioning is one of the means for both the teacher and the learner to elicit feedback about performance. Know your audience. Use methods that match the topic rather than the teacher's personality. Most teachers have a preferred style of teaching and tend to rely on that approach regardless of the content to be taught. Use repetition and pacing. Repetition, if used with discretion, is a technique that straightens learning. Summarize important points. Summarizing of information at the completion of the teaching learning encounter gives a perspective on what has been covered, how it relates to the objectives, and what you expect the learner to have achieved. Summarizing also reviews key ideas to instill information in the mind and helps the learner to see the parts of our whole.